Without objection. Madam President. Senator from Tennessee. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I asked to speak for up to 15 minutes in morning business. Without objection. And could the chair please let me know when there are two minutes left? Yes. Thanks, Madam Chairman. I'm glad I had a chance to hear the, my distinguished friend from Illinois speak about student loans um, and, and college. All of us would like to make it easier for Americans to be able to afford college. And, and at another time, I'll speak about some of the other options available. The average tuition at four-year colleges in America is $8,000. The average tuition for three-year public colleges, uh, for four-year public colleges is $8,000, The average tuition for community colleges, two-year colleges is $3,000. I know at the University of Tennessee where tuition is about $8,000, a very good campus in Knoxville, virtually all the freshmen show up with a $4,000 HOPE scholarship, a state scholarship, and of course, if they're lower income students, they're eligible for Pell Grants and, and, and other aid. So we'll continue to work on a bipartisan basis to, to make this opportunity available to students. And if there are abuses in the for-profit sector or other sectors of higher education, we should work on those together. But I'd like to talk a little bit more specifically this morning about the issue of student loans and interest rates on student loans. President Obama is busy this week on campuses across America talking about student loans. He's, it's a noble goal uh, to talk about making it easier for students to afford college. It's a goal we all share. But I'm afraid the president's not telling the whole story. Because if he were to tell the whole story, what he would have to tell the students is that the principal reason for the rise in tuition at public colleges and universities across America and community colleges, and the principal reason for the increase in student loans is President Obama himself and his own health care policies. Would the now, senator yield for a unanimous consent request? Of course. And I don't yeah. want to change your, your line of thought here. No. It's beautiful. And I want to hear every word. No. I ask unanimous well, consent that after the, uh, the conclusion of the remarks of the senator from Tennessee, that there will be 10 minutes given to the senator from Wyoming, Senator Barrasso, and that I have the remainder of the Republican time. That objection? Yeah. Without objection. Sure, I, of, of, of course. But so, uh, as I was saying, uh, President Obama's speeches around the country on college campuses about student debt uh, are incomplete because the rest of the story, unfortunately, is that the main reason why college tuition is going up and the main reason, therefore, why loans are going up is President Obama and his health care policies. Now, to be fair, he didn't start many of these policies. They've been going on for a good while. But he's made them worse over the last three or four years. And when the new health care law goes into effect in 2014 with its new mandates on states, we'll find an exaggeration of what's already been happening, which is that federal health care mandates on states are soaking up the money that states otherwise would spend on the University of Oklahoma and Tennessee and the State University of New York, and when states don't support their public colleges and universities, which is where three quarters of our higher education students attend, then their only choice is either to become more efficient, to decrease their quality, or to raise tuition. And most of them are trying to do all three. So federal health care policies are the reason tuition is up, and the reason tuition is up is the main reason the main reason, debt is up. Now, specifically what we're talking about, or what the president's been talking about, is a 3.4% interest rate for some student loans. Here's some facts about that. The president has proposed that for one year for new loans, rates would remain at 3.4% for this kind of loan. Governor Romney agrees with him. I agree with him. So there's substantial support from both the president and his probable Republican opponent in the presidential race for this next year, new loans after July 1, that now are at 3.4%, would stay at 3.4%. The benefit to students who get the advantage of that lower rate, all other loans are at 6.8% by law, is about $7 a month. 
That's according to the Congressional Research Service. So all this talk is about offering students the benefit of about seven a month for new loans. It's important to notice that no student who has a 3.4% loan today will see his or her interest rate go up. Let me say that again. If you've got a loan and you're going to the University of North Carolina and you're paying 3.4% today, your rate will not go up on July 1. The law only affects new loans. And it doesn't affect 60% of loans. For 60% of those who are getting new loans after July 1, they'll continue to pay the 6.8% rate set by Congress a long time ago. But Madam President, I'm glad the President's bringing this issue up because the real driver of higher tuition and higher interest rates are the President's own policies in two ways. The government and the congressional Democrats who passed the health care law actually are overcharging students, all students, on their student loans and using some of the money to pay for the health care law. Now, this isn't just my figures. The Congressional Budget Office said that when the new health care law passed, Congress took $61 billion of so-called savings, I'd call them profits, on student loans, and it spent $10 billion to reduce the debt, $8.7 billion on the health care law, and the rest on Pell Grants. Now, how does that work? How could Congress be overcharging students? Well, under the law, the government borrows money at 2.8%. Under the law, the government loans to students at 6.8%. That produces a profit. The Congressional Budget Office has said that the Congress could lower the interest rate from 6.8 to 5.3% and save all students $2,200 over the life of their average 10-year loan. So I'm introducing today legislation on my behalf and that of others called the Student Rate, the Student Interest Rate Reduction Act. And what we will propose with this law is that we will keep the interest rate at 3.4% for subsidized Stafford loans beginning with the year July 1, just as President Obama has proposed, just as Governor Romney has proposed, and we will pay for that by taking back from the health care law money that the Congress overcharged students on their student loans. This one-year solution, as I said, will save students about $7 a month on interest payments on their new loans, about $83 a year. It will cost the taxpayers about $6 billion, which will be paid for by reductions in savings from the Health Care Act. Now, let's talk just a moment, Madam President, about the real cause of tuition going up and loans going up, and that is federal health care policy. When I was governor of Tennessee in the 1980s, the same thing would happen every year as I made up my state budget, and it's happening today in every state capital in America. I'd work through all the things that we had to fund with state tax dollars, the roads, the schools, the prisons, the various state agencies. And then I'd get down to the end of the budgeting process and I have some money left. And the choice would always be between Medicaid and higher education, our public colleges and universities. I spent my whole eight years trying to keep the amount that we gave to Medicaid down so I could get up the amount for colleges and universities because I thought that was the future of our state. In fact, we had a formula back then that said that if you went to a public college or university, the, the, the taxpayer would pay for 70% of it and the student would pay for 30%. And if we raised your tuition, we'd raise the state's share. So we kept that 70-30. Madam President, that's turned completely around today in Tennessee. It's now 30-70. The students pay 70% and the taxpayers pay 30%. And why is that? It's because for that 30 years, orders from Washington about Medicaid mandates to every state have forced governors and legislatures to take the money they would otherwise spend for colleges, public colleges and universities, and spend it instead for Medicaid. And as a result, the state colleges and universities have less money, and to get more money, they raise tuition. So when tuition goes up at the University of California and you see students protesting, the reason is in Washington. 
The reason is in Washington. Now, I said earlier, this President Obama did not invent this problem. This is a 30-year problem, but he's made it worse. He made it worse with the laws that said when states have less money, they have to spend more on Medicaid. Well, if they are told from Washington to spend more on Medicaid, even though they have less revenues, they're going to spend less on something else. So they spend less on the University of California or the State University of New York or the University of Tennessee. Last year in Tennessee, state funding for Medicaid went up 15 percent in actual dollars. As a result, state funding for the community colleges and the University of Tennessee went down 15 percent. Real cuts. That's not a cut in growth. That's real cuts. And what did the colleges and universities do? They raised tuition, 8 percent. And what do students do? They borrow more money. Now, I've been trying to get this point across ever since I've been a United States senator. I even said during the health care debate that everyone who voted for it ought to be sentenced to go serve as governor for eight years in his or her home state so they'd understand this problem. We can't continue to order the states to spend more for Medicaid and expect our great colleges and universities to be affordable and to continue to be the best in the world. That is the real reason why tuition is going up and loans are going up. So here are the facts. There's still good options for students around the country. I mentioned a little earlier that the average cost of a four-year public university in America is for tuition $8,200 and for a community college is $3,000. And there are many scholarships to help go there. And it is true that loans are going up to very high levels. And it is true that there are some abuses here or there in the for-profit industry or in other parts of the higher education system. But it is also true that in the United States, we not only have some of the best colleges and universities in the world, we have almost all of them. And many of them are public colleges and universities. And they are at risk today. Why? because of federal health care policies that are hamstringing states and soaking up the money that states should be using to fund the universities of this country and the community colleges of this country. So, Mr. President, I'm introducing today the Student Loan Interest Rate Reduction Act. It addresses exactly the subject that President Obama is talking about on the campaign trail these days. How do we keep the interest rate on subsidized Stafford loans, the new loans that began July 1, how do we keep that at 3.4% for one year? Governor Romney supports that. President Obama supports that. I support that. The only difference is how we pay for it. It's a $6 billion cost. Our friends on the Democratic side have come up with their usual method of paying for it. They're going to put a tax on people who create jobs. We have a little better idea on this side, and that is let's take back $6 billion of the dollars that the federal government overcharges students on student loans today to help pay for the health care law, and let's give it back to the students, and let's extend this for one year. That'll leave about 2 or $3 billion extra, and we can Senator use that to shore minutes. up. Thank you, Madam President. We can use that to shore up the Pell Grant deficit that's expected over the next couple of years. So I would say respectfully to President Obama, Mr. President, when you visit the next college campus, tell the whole story. It is hard to attend college. It's hard to pay for college. There are many good options. Debt is up. But in fairness, the principal reason tuition is rising and therefore debt is rising is because of President Obama's own health care policies. He didn't start them, but he's made them worse. And what he's done is put in place a set of policies that is soaking up the money that states would use to fund public colleges and universities and community colleges across this country. Using that money for Medicaid, as a result, the colleges and the community colleges have less money. They raise tuition. That's why. That's the principal reason why we have higher tuition and higher interest rates and the way to stop that would be either to repeal a health care law or repeal the Medicaid mandates. It would improve the quality of American public higher education, and it would improve access to higher education. It would slow down the rising of tuition, and it would slow down the rising of student debt. Madam President, I thank the chair, and I yield the floor. Uh, Madam President. Senator from Wyoming.